Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. I thought uh, we could do our little watercolor uh, ephemeras for our mini journals that we've been working on. So this uh, was a video on how to make these cute little uh, mini journals to go in your purse or whatever you want. They're a botanical theme with pressed flowers, so I'll try and remember to link that below. Um, so I thought we could work on playing with some bits and pieces that can go in here. And uh, I love to do little watercolor color doodles. And I call them doodles because they're quick, they're loose. Uh, there's not all tons of thought that go into them. Uh, it's really just having fun with watercolor and just playing and creating these cute little mini sized postcard type uh, watercolor impressions to glue into any type of journal. In this case, my uh, botanical themes. So I've got a uh, garden, botanical, I have nature, and I have another one that's gluing somewhere. Here it is. And this is botany. So just some fun little journals, and I love to decorate them with little watercolor samples and sketches. So we're gonna do that today if you'd like to play along. So you can use uh, watercolors, you can water down some acrylics, you can use uh, watercolor pencils, you can just draw whatever you like, but I'd love for you to move along and play with me today. Uh, for me, I'm going to be using my little mini uh, Winsor & Newton type watercolor. They're just a tiny little mini pack that I keep in my little lap journal. I don't think I have that with me, do I? Where's that? No, I don't know where it's at. Oh, there it is. So this uh, watercolor kit I bought uh, for a little journal that I, a lap book journal that I made for watercolors. So when I'm uh, traveling or moving around, I like to bring this book with me. And uh, this is the box they came in and it just, they just sit in there and it opens right up and I keep my little spare, any scrap leftover watercolor paper gets clipped or put into these pockets. So you see this book just keeps going. So here's some scraps and uh, some other little pockets in here, a notebook, all kinds of stuff. Um, but I love doing this because then my, my stuff is just ready to go for, for playing with watercolor. So that's where I keep my watercolor paints. So we're gonna use those today. And uh, lap books are so much fun to make. I really enjoy making those. They're quite time consuming, but uh, you just keep going and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just, they're so much fun to play with. And the themes you can do. So in that case, I did watercolor. Um, I got another one that's for sketching. But uh, anyways, I'm going off track here. So these are the paints I'm using. And I've taken a watercolor pad, just a standard watercolor paper pad. And uh, so this one is, it doesn't have a weight to this paper. It's not a super, super great paper, I've noticed. Um, what's fun about watercolors is playing with the paper is I find more interesting than playing with different kind of paints. Uh, the way the paint and water absorbs into paper and you, you're gonna find something you like and things you don't like. So uh, this doesn't even say if it's cold pressed or anything. It just says acid free. So anyways, we're gonna play with this paper today. So what I've done is I take some painter's tape and I tape out a little grid here because I like white borders around my watercolor and uh, it just creates a more like professional look, I'd say. Um, and what I do is I kind of gauge the size of the little sketches that I want. So I know that they're gonna fit in little pockets here in my books. So I've done that and now I get to play. So you need some watercolor, obviously. Um, I usually just use this palette, but you can use a cheapy dollar store palette. I have a cheapy dollar store brush. And this, this little mini brush came with the Winsor Newton kit. It sits right in here. I love this little guy. He's probably the only brush I take care of. Uh, you're gonna need some paper towel. You're gonna need a pencil and a pen if, uh, if you wanna use the pen, it's up to you. I like the ink look after, but it's entirely up to the look you're after. And a pencil just to do some doodles with. So I'm going to load up some water on my brush and I'm gonna pick a color. So I'm gonna pick this really pretty, um, it's kinda of like a uh, butterscotch color. And I'm gonna load her up. Hopefully I'm in frame here. 
and a little bit of yellow to that. And then I'm gonna paint some of these blocks. So I like to work with um, a saturated background and I am literally just throwing the color down. I'm not worrying about how it's sitting or how wet it is or anything. I'm just playing with the watercolor and the water. So I'm just gonna let that saturate in. And there's all kinds of different techniques. I am by no means am a professional watercolor artist, as you can see. I just like to play with them. The nature of these paints is what makes watercolor so fun. But there are a lot of tutorials out there on how to properly mix colors and different techniques you can apply to using this paint. Like a wet on wet technique, a, a wet on dry, all kinds of different things. So I'm just gonna do these eight blocks and just dab that color in. And then I think I'll go in with another color. So I wet the block, I grab my paint and then I'll just do around the edges like that. So let's do maybe another brown another brown in there and I'm sorry I don't have the names of these colors anymore this paint kit I bought a very long time ago and watercolor does go a very long way so if you're interested in watercolor sometimes it's worth the investment to go with the higher end products especially in my opinion the paper so I'm gonna dab into this pink color here And I'm gonna, while that's wet, I'm just gonna touch in this color and let it just do whatever it wants to do. It will leak and bleed into other colors and pigments, all these different pigments will react differently. So I'm going to, and then what you can do too, if you don't like the, the look of it right now, it will dry a little bit lighter so you can always absorb it with your paper towel. So for this side, I would like to maybe do a couple of doodles before I wet the background. So I'm just going to, this stuff's just coming out of my head. So some will, some will work and some won't, but it's really just a loose sketch. I'm not trying to stress myself out about anything. I just want to have fun and I'm trying to keep my hand out of the wet paint. And it's really just decorative. There's not a ton of realism here. It's really just having fun with your materials. And I'm just pulling out some different leaf shapes. And maybe one more up here. What should we do up here? So maybe uh, put a little bit more curve. And again, I'm just trying to get, keep my hand out of the wet part here. So on these ones, I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I thought I might draw a few first before I paint the background, see what different look that gives me. And now I'm going to go into my water again, and this time I'm gonna grab some greens. So let me just clean out the spot so it doesn't go too brown. And I'm gonna throw some greens in there. This time I'll do some greens on this block. And this color will be a little bit hard to see right now because you're kind of far away. But there is, there is some color on here. I like to keep it light. I like the, uh, the, the drawing of the flower to be the focal point and just a subtle background. But maybe you want something more dramatic. Entirely up to you. Okay, so there's some green blocks. I'm gonna switch to my little, little mini brush now. I'm gonna wet that. See how tiny it is, little travel brush. Oh my gosh, so cute. And I'm going to go into some green and some, I think this is ultramarine blue. No, that's another green. Maybe ultramarine's over here, yeah. So I'm just gonna mix those three colors together. And I'm going to now 
paint some of these little leaves. So I'll pull you down for that. Hopefully you're way below, camera's way below me. So hopefully you're in frame there. Again, I'm trying to keep my hands out of this wet stuff. I'm going to just pencil in with this little mini brush. Stay in the lines, go out of the lines, whatever. So this, this one I'm painting kind of wet onto dry. So another technique is you can wet these leaves with just water. Paint, put the water where you want the color to go. So it's kind of a wet on wet technique. So, and now I'm gonna dip into my color and I'm gonna drop it in that section and let it do what it wants. And then what's nice is you can then rinse your brush and go into say some yellow and drop some yellow in. And just let that dry for a bit. And the colors will dry a little bit lighter in my experience than what they are when they're wet. So nice little watercolor look here. So I think I'll try that technique again on this one. Hopefully I'm in frame. Pull it down a little bit. Wet these leaves. So we're gonna do all of these little boxes because I wanna pull the tape off and show you how pretty it looks. So you can always fast forward this part. And again, I am no watercolor professional, I'm just playing. I just like to play with the colors. So I'm gonna let that one dry. Go one more, go up here. Again, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the wet. Just waiting for that to dry. Hope I'm in frame for you. <laughs> Camera's so low, it's almost in my face. Love this little brush. It's just so cute. All right, I'm going to leave that one like that. I'm going to let those dry a little bit. Let's see how we're doing over here. So this is pretty saturated still. These are dry, so we can play with these. All right, so you can draw them out again if you like. Draw something like, uh, like some, let's see this one dry, yeah. Some berries maybe. I don't want to put too much detail in because I don't want the video to be too long. but just doodling away, or you can freehand it. So I think I'll do like a little kind of baby's breath thing here. So I'm gonna grab this uh, color again. It's kind of like a butterscotch color, I quite like it. And then this watercolor set comes with a white, which really isn't a color in watercolor. Like if you want something white, you basically leave the page white. But I'm gonna add it to this just to mute down this color a little bit. So I'm just going to do little globs here. Nice and loose. Not worrying about super details. And I want to do a few that are a little bit more watered down than that. And this can be like a little baby's breath. So let's do maybe an orange one. I'll throw some orange in here now. Uh, hopefully I'm in frame. So you do wanna wait till the background does dry or this would bleed, unless you're after that effect, of course. And a little bit more water down. Let that dry. Let's do blue. Bring this 
down here. I'll do a little bit of a blues, blue baby breath. Just for fun, why not? And then just nice and loose. Kind of random, no pattern. So if you find you're getting a pattern, try and break it up. So we'll let those dry. Let's do the berries. So I'm gonna do this nice bright pink here. With a bit of blue mixed in it. Just gonna go around the berry real quick and leave just a little, little white spot. So this is wet on dry. And I like the pencil mark, so some of you might not like the pencil. You, uh, you wanna erase it before you put the paint on it, obviously. So there's some berries. And we can do the green leaves because they're not touching the red, so they won't bleed together. And get brown. There we go. Something fun like that. We'll come back and do all the stems on these ones. All right, what else do we want to do? So we did some leaves. Um, let's do some kind of wispy looking plants. So I'm going to try and make like a dark brownie black color. So I'm adding all the blues I have, and I'm sorry, again, I don't know the names of the paints that are in this palette. So I'm just making a dark brown. And I'm going to do, let's make sure it's dry. I think those are still a bit wet, so I'm gonna move over here. Hope you're in frame there. All right, so I'm just gonna do these little dots. Because I like kind of the silhouette look of plants as well. And do the stem coming up. Nice thin little lines. It's kind of like a silhouette look of a wild flower that's gone to seed maybe. And again, you don't have to watch all of this if you wanna fast forward or hopefully you're painting along with me. That would be fun. Love to see what you do. Feel free to tag me in your Instagram if you post a picture of it or send me a message. It's fun to see what people do. I do get people sending me pictures of stuff they've tried from my channel. And uh, I love that. I think it's awesome. People uh, can be very intimidated by trying something new. Naturally, we all are. But it is a lot of fun when you try something and you add it to your journal or your card making or whatever it is you're into. And it's all hand done. I love that. All right, let's do another one of these. Um, what should we do? Hmm, I'm trying to think off the fly here what I've done on these other ones. Let's do some flowers. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm just gonna clean this this one out and I'm gonna add some yellow to this. So I'm just gonna to go to my big brush here to mix it. And I think I'll use my big brush on this. So I'm just gonna maybe do a little buttercup here. So another little five petal flower. In this case, this one's kind of moved away from me. So you see how I left that kind of little bit of a white line there? That's just to indicate the center of the flower. So let's do another one up here maybe. Move you down, just wanna make sure you're in frame. So one, two, three, four, five. And then maybe another one this way. One, two, three, four, five. So they're not quite facing me. This one, see how the, the, the flower kind of gets ruined if you don't leave those white indicators in between, if that makes sense. Let's do a pink one, pinky orange. Let's 
do one over here. So one, two, three, four, five. Maybe a little, oops, sorry, at the camera. One, two, three, four, five. And you see the paint is still, the fibers are a little bit wet in the paper, which is making it bleed, which is a nice effect as well. Uh, one more, one, let's do this one facing. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll do this one facing away. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let those dry so we can add more detail. Let's do some more leaves. I love leaves. Let's do maybe a fern. So I'm gonna go back to my small brush for this. If I can find it in the water. And we'll go to some green. My hands are wet. Let's use our big brush for that. It just makes this color like, pretty impatient. <laughs> you could use a bigger brush too instead of this little mini. But I like the mini. It's uh, fun to use. Let's do... So this one's going to have no pencil line. And this is again wet on dry. So just experiment, have fun with these uh, paints. You never know what results you're going to get. And if you're not sure um, what to do, then check out some YouTube channels. There's some great watercolor artists out there. Find one that you like that you can follow and or just paint along with me, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do one more up here. I think I'll do a fern over here. So because this is green, I'm going to do it in that blue color. So I'm going to give myself a... And I don't want to spend hours. I just want to create the illusion of a fern here with its little fronds. And this little brush is great for that, as you can see. You could put as much or as little detail in this as you want. So you could start with a base of watercolor as well, let it dry, and then just if you're not comfortable painting, or you don't wanna put that kind of time in, you can stamp. You can stamp these little individual boxes for some botanical looks if you have botanical stamps. Uh, you can also stamp them in an ink that won't bleed to make sure it's a, like a setting ink and then you can paint your stamps in that way you don't have to do the freehand drawing if you're not comfortable drawing but it's i would recommend trying it you might like it and so I, while that's wet i think i'm going to add some of this greeny yellow into it and just dab it in and see what what it does see how it changes it while it's wet. Either I'm gonna like it or I'm not, but we'll have a look. All right, and then we got one more to fill in up here. So I think I'll do another fern. This time a little bit greener. And we'll do one of these cute little round ones. So you're basically just drawing with this little brush and letting the paint do its thing. And I love watercolor for that look. It has just such a pretty, delicate look to it. There's some watercolor artists out there. Um, I love their work. Um, I can't think, she lives in town here and her watercolor work is beautiful. She does botanical work and she leaves a lot of, um, she does very dramatic lighting in the 
in the uh, paintings and they're just stunning. So her highlights are the white paper. She leaves the white paper as the, the brightest point in the picture. And, um, and then she goes really bold with these beautiful colors. So just look up watercolor artists and see what people are capable of doing. It's quite amazing. I'm just gonna do one more here. I feel like something's missing in the corner here. We're just, sorry, this video is gonna be pretty long because like I said, I wanted to finish all of these boxes and we still have to go back and do some detail. But when the tape comes off, I, there's nothing more satisfying <laughs> than pulling the tape off. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this dark color now. So mix a little more. So I'm gonna use all my blues, my brown. So I'm gonna use a lot of this color. And I'm gonna put some stems in. And I'm just gonna do it nice and quick. Not putting tons of detail, but I wanna give these flowers some reference points now as to where they're growing from. And you can see I'm not painting every single stem. And just let, let the viewer fill the rest of the lines in. And so if I'm in frame. Put a couple of stems across in front of other flowers. So I put the stem right across this piece here. Just to create a little bit more dimension. Do the same with the blue. And the colors you can come up with, they have these beautiful metallic paints. Uh, I wanna get some gold. There's, it looks so pretty. So I'm uh, moving in the process of moving still, so I'm not buying anything. I told myself, behave, don't buy anything. <laughs> you have nowhere to put it anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the green here and maybe give myself a couple little little petals on these flowers. Just nice and loose. Maybe a little bit darker now. A little drama in there. Put some color in the centers. Now that the, just make sure the flower is dry if you don't want the color to bleed all the way through. So you do have to have a little bit of patience with watercolor. It's not like acrylic where it dries really quick. Now, if you are using acrylic for this project, you'll see it won't, it will, if you water it down really well, it will have a similar look, but it's not always, it's not going to react exactly the same as this watercolor paint because watercolors is very diluted but very pigment. It's got a lot of pigmentation in it, which gives you these beautiful colors, especially if you're using a, a good quality watercolor product. All right, let's try this guy now. Give him a little bit more drama. Just by adding a little bit, he's still a little wet, so might get some really cool bleeding effects here. And I think I'll do more with the pen on him than with paint. I don't want it to go too muddy. Go back to this now. I really like the, the bleed of these ones. I think that look, turned out quite nice. We'll see if I like the white background. I don't know if I'm gonna like the white background. I think I might put some color in there just to make this video that much longer. <laughs> Just a little indication. And this guy too. Just some fun. Mix 
some more. Nice and dark. Okay. I kind of like how the yellow dried in that. It's kind of neat. Don't know if I like this dark in it now. Maybe a little bit too dark. But that's okay. I've learned, you know, learned that I really like dropping the color in while it's wet too. It has a pretty cool effect. All right, let's go. Let's go to this pink color for the center of these ones. And then we'll go to the dark color for the stems. And that one I think will leave. So I think what I want to do, assuming these are dry, is I just want to add maybe a little something to them. Just so when we pull the um, when we pull the tape off, we'll have a bit of a border. So I just want to I'll make sure they're dry so that it doesn't bleed and create a, a brown. Just use up what's left on my palette here. Use up these colors. I like the white background, but I don't. I think it's going to get lost when we pull the tape off. And I really like the border. A little bit drama in this one with the darker color. Paper towel. Yeah. All right. So now the fun part. I'm going to back you up a little bit here and we'll pull this tape off. While some of them are still wet, that's okay. And then you're just going to pull it off real careful and it exposes all your cute little mini botanical masterpieces. Try and keep your palette straight so in case this wet stuff, you don't want it to run. Normally I'd let it dry, but for video purposes, I'm gonna pull it off. All right, and there's our cute little mini botanical Samples. So some really cute ones here that we can cut up after. So let's uh, let's play with the dry ones. We'll do just a little bit. You gotta make sure they're dry. So these are still wet, but these are dry. So I always sign them too. I give myself just a little signature. And then if there's any details I wanna pull out, I'm gonna pull you in real close to this one just so you can see what I'm doing here, I hope. Can you see me there? So just get a little signature. Okay, camera, stop moving. <laughs> okay. And maybe I wanna kinda make the leaves a little bit more dramatic or something. So I'll pull out a little detail. Or maybe I wanna add some kind of cute little whimsical spin spindles in here. Just make sure it's dry. So same with this. I really like how delicate this one is. Uh, so I'm gonna leave those. I'm gonna maybe pop the stem on this one because we didn't really finish painting that stem. I forgot about it. So we'll just add it in now. As long as the paint's pretty dry. And another little signature. Again, you can pull out 
even more little details that maybe didn't get painted, just for fun. So let's do this guy. So for this one, I think I'll define the leaves and center the flower a little better. So I really pop the center here, go around the petals a little bit. Kind of like the bleed of that one, so I'm gonna leave that one. I'm gonna pull some detail out of this guy. And you may or may not like this part of it. Like some people like it very delicate looking. Uh, I I like to add the pencil because I like the sketchy look, and I don't like to cover the paint perfectly. Kind of won't like to go outside a little bit. Just adds a little bit more whimsy, I guess. And it all depends on the look you're after. Sign that one. Okay, and yeah, sign them all. They are your little masterpieces, you know, and when they go in a journal, especially if one you're selling or giving away, you should have your signature on your work. Even these tiny little doodles. This one's still wet, so we'll skip that. Oh, I just put my hand in some wet paint. I'm just gonna do a little indication of the petals on this one, nice and light, because this one's got a nice delicate feel to it too. I'm just gonna give it a little more texture in the center. This one, I kind of like that one how it is too. Just put a little signature over top, same with this one. Let's see what we can do with this fern, is it dry? Let's do a little bit more drama in this guy. So I'm gonna do another video with uh, these ones that we've created and cutting them up and showing how we can use them in our journals. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you some inspiration and some ideas. Please feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. And um, I hope you give it a go. I hope you have some fun with it. And I hope that uh, you make these little journals along with me and create these really, really cute little botanical accents and when you cut them up they make these lovely little i mean you can fold them and make them little cards you can do whatever you like with them but i think they're quite charming so i hope you like that and i uh, hope to see you back here where we can decorate our little mini journals all right guys have a great day bye